I'm Vicki Hogarth and welcome to Southwest Magazine. Winter Warmer Festival is one of the many reasons to visit St. Andrews in January. Here to talk about it is Winter Warmer Festival founder Jamie Steele and recreation manager for the town of St. Andrews, Mervyn Henselpacker. Thank you both for being here today. Great to be here. Thanks, Vicki. Thanks. Since you are the founder, Jamie, let's start off by talking about, for people who might not be from St. Andrews who aren't as familiar with Winter Warmer Festival as we are, tell us a little bit about the backstory, how it became a festival, and what it's all about. Okay. Um, so, really, I think it started uh, in a, uh, around a kitchen table with uh, Ryan LeBlanc who is a St. Andrews musician who I used to work with. Uh, Ryan toured internationally and, and we'd often go to these um, conferences, music conferences, where he would showcase or you know, there'd be music industry people there. And they often occurred in big hotels and um, they, uh, the, the conference would take over a hotel and often on the top two floors there would, there would be, the hotel rooms would be devoid of any hotel furniture, but uh, musicians would occupy those spaces and uh, do, do showcases, do short shows, and the music industry people would come through to sort of look at that. And Ryan and I got talking about, oh, wouldn't it be kind of cool to do a, a whole festival, not just a conference, but a festival that people could, the public could come to, uh, something like that. <clears throat> and, then, um, and then it evolved from that to maybe a house concert festival, so something just a little bit different. And uh, thinking that, you know, St. Andrews is a wonderful place to come, as you said, no matter what time of the year. But not much, you know, goes on to attract people in, in the winter months. So we decided that maybe it would be a, um, fun to try to, to inaugurate some kind of a music festival at, at that time of year. And um, we did try to, uh, we, we felt the, the hotel, the Algonquin, probably wouldn't be up for um, the kind of uh, event involving the hotel in that way that, that we initially thought. And then the, the house concert festival idea was, um, was problematic on, on a few fronts. And then we just, we moved to um, creating a, a, a smaller venue festival, more or less. And, and uh, winter is a time where we like to congregate indoors, cozy, um, I mean outdoors too if we can, but so often we can't rely on the weather. Um, so the idea of a smaller um, venue festival with maybe one big event over the course of a, a weekend. And, um, you know, try to attract uh, high quality artists to come and, um, and participate in this kind of a, a winter event. And so in 2012, I think, we, we held our first one. and. Um, it was it was successful, and we just uh, you know I just kept you know moving along, and over time it's evolved uh, a little bit. Um, we now, um, uh, as of last year, uh, after a two-year pandemic pause, we came back, and people were really kind of wanting to have an uh, an event uh, or something within the winter warmer event that would uh, get people out and dancing a lot of the because a lot of the venues were smaller they were always you know people would come and sit and listen to music and, and, and that's wonderful but people really felt the, the urge to get up and do something a little bit more so last year we had two larger events though on the Friday night we, we had a big event at the hotel uh, with the hypochondriate so it was kind of a dance and then a, another larger event um, at the aquarium theater which uh, you know, uh, we've, we've sort of uh, uh, moved the, uh, or, or winter warmer is uh, part and parcel of uh, the, the concert series that Luke McDonald and I are doing throughout the fall and winter. So, um, so we have, uh, you know, two large events now over the course of the weekend, plus a number of smaller musical events in smaller venues like Honey Beans and the Gallery at Sunbury Shores. Um, the Anglican Church Hall, the Brew Pub, the, the Red Herring, and hoping to bring on a couple of other uh, uh, local businesses to, to participate in that. So it's, uh, it's basically a weekend, you know, a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, full of that. And uh, every year we, we add a little bit new. So, um, you know, we, we, we create a, a situation whereby we start probably uh, 4 o'clock, 4.30 on the Friday and we try to stagger 
the, the events that we have uh, offered, the music events that we have offered, so people can move from one to another, and then uh, capping each night off with a larger event. So, so this year that, that we've sort of followed that same pattern with uh, a whole range of, of uh, music and artists. I know Merv, in a few minutes we'll talk to Merv about what else we can expect, the complimentary events that fit around <clears throat> Winter Warmer. Right. But I love to, I mean, this is the first time I'm gonna say 2024 on the show, which is crazy to think it's around the corner, and this will be Winterfest 2024. What are the dates of this year's festival, and what are some of the highlights and the, the roster of artists right. coming? Right, right, so it, it's, uh, it's always the end of January. Um, so the 25th, which is a Thursday, we're gonna kick off uh, uh, on a Thursday this year, and, and uh, there won't, tr well, there'll be, there'll be some music, but it, um, um, but the town has come on board to do a winter carnival uh, portion for the weekend, so we're rounding, rounding the whole winter warmer festival out a little bit. But the music uh, really gets going on the, on the Friday. Um, we have uh, starting off on the Friday a, uh, a new First Nations band from Fredericton called Hello Crows, um, who will be, be coming down and making their uh, St. Andrew's debut playing at, at Sunbury Shores. Uh, it's an early show, I think, uh, starting at uh, 4.30, I think, on, um, uh, no, sorry, uh, starting at 6 p.m. at uh, Sunbury Shores on the Friday afternoon, and then, or Friday evening, and then moving to um, uh, uh, the Anglican Church Hall, where uh, Juno Award winner Garrett Mason, who's an incredible blues player, uh, son of uh, the iconic Dutch Mason, who uh, is no longer with us, but Garrett has been to St. Andrews a number of times and always a favorite. Um, and then uh, a big show that night at uh, the Algonquin featuring Grand Theft Bus, which is a well-known New Brunswick-based um, improvisational, progressive, rock, jazz, wh whatever you want. I mean, they do it all and uh, well-known and, and well-loved. So. That's the Friday. Saturday, we'll start things a little bit earlier in terms of music. A gang at Sunbury Shores, there'll be um, a local band, uh, Yellow Blue, they're known as, because they actually can't, they really haven't come up with their definitive name yet. So uh, <laughs> they decided on Yellow Blue after playing a show, or before playing a show last year at Sunbury Shores, and they've just sort of kept it. It's a project of David Norris who's a musician, uh, has recorded a number of albums, and has just gathered a bunch of his friends, actually, from, from town here. Um, and uh, a really fun, fun unit, five-piece um, band. They'll be playing a, a Saturday afternoon at Sunbury Shores. And then moving on, we're, we'll be doing some things at, at Honeybeans later that afternoon, I think some comedy. Um, and then the, the Anglican Church Hall of Gang uh, over the... Uh, over the dinner hour, we are serving food as well. Um, and the show there with um, Stephen Lewis and Bobby Mahar. Stephen's a well-known uh, sort of uh, gu guitar player, does a lot of looping in, in the work that he does, funky music, but he's teamed up with Bobby to do a Dave Matthews, Tim Reynolds tribute show. So if anyone's a Dave Matthews fan, this will be a, a cool, cool show. And then the big show that night is at the Aquarium Theater with uh, J.P. Cormier and Dave Gunning, who are two outstanding East Coast artists. And then the Sunday, um, we have a, an interesting uh, uh, event just happening to coincide with Winter Warmer, so we've involved them. Chris Kirby, who's a well-known Newfoundland musician who's living in Nova Scotia, he's a music producer. Um, he plays with Matt Anderson, um, so if you saw Matt this past summer at Kingsbury, Chris Kirby was there playing with him on keyboards. But Chris works with a lot of young musicians and he's um, actually hosting a, um, a music residency for young musicians over the course of that weekend and into the week. And um, he's got a couple of local uh, musicians who are coming to learn the craft of songwriting. And they'll be working with uh, a couple of emerging artists from, from Nova Scotia, Joe H. Henry and Isabella Sampson, writing tunes with them. 
but as part of part of this workshop, they do a they want to do a live uh, component. So there'll be a little songwriter circle involving these two emerging artists, Joy H. Henry and and um, uh, Isabella, and then Chris Kirby as well uh, in the afternoon at the Anglican Church Hall, and then that evening. Um, uh, in the church itself, I have a, a new uh, string quartet from Fredericton, the Elm City String Quartet, coming down to sort of cap off the uh, the, uh, the festival. Awesome. And again, I've only talked uh, uh, about a portion of the the people playing. As I said, the the brew pub's going to be having music throughout the weekend. That the the uh, red herring and and honey beans too will be be doing stuff. So full, full, full of music. It's all and full of music. Yeah, and as I said, and you alluded to, Mervyn's stepped up and the town is going to uh, really sort of round this out and, and provide a whole host of activities that are non-musical. So if you know, people don't like music <laughs> or the acts that I've chosen, there, there'll be other, other things that they can do, family-oriented things and, and whatnot. This is, so. I think this is Merv's first time on South Coast Magazine, which is so exciting to me because I've been <laughs> meaning to have you on. <coughs> Uh, you've heard of the Midas touch, there is the Mervyn touch now in St. Andrews <laughs> where he's joined Katie's Cove, he brought volleyball Christmas committee, you bring a ton of fun to everything you do, so I can't wait to hear about what you're adding to Winter Warmer to make it not just a music lover's destination, but a winter lover's destination for, for like-minded people and their families. Yeah. Well, first of all, thanks for having me on. Of course. Um, so as uh, Jamie mentioned there, we're, the Town of St. Andrews uh, Recreation Department has partnered with Winter Warmer and Jamie on uh, bringing some activities outside of the music um, for everybody in the community. So we're working on uh, different activities, again, for everybody. Uh, so we have some family day activities happening that we've partnered with the Youth Centre with. Uh, we have some kids' uh, youth team dances. We have... Um, a uh, special skate event happening. We have Snoga happening and we partnered with Pivot Yoga for that. Um, some of the restaurants in the community have come together and they've, they're gonna put out some specials uh, for the weekend. And we also have a special uh, community challenge that we're working on right now. Um, so there'll be more details for that coming soon. And uh, some really cool, interesting prizes to be won with that as well. So yeah, lots of things to happen for everyone and we'll be, uh, putting all that information out uh, within this week so people can look forward to getting more information there shortly. Snoga, I assume it sounds exactly what it is, is it's snow yoga? Exactly, yes. So right now we're looking at having it uh, at the block house and um, we'll have pivot yoga come out and you'll have to dress warm for the occasion, but you'll do yoga right in the <laughs> right in the snow. Actually, I, I will definitely hopefully. bring the camera. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, hopefully snow. I don't know yeah. if I'll be doing yoga, but I'll definitely bring the cameras to see that in action. Perfect. Um, and is the skating, I know that you've brought Glow, glow skating has been one of the successes of uh, this winter already. Yeah. Uh, is it something similar to that in terms of? It will be very similar to that, okay. yes. Yeah. Some different uh, activities will be happening uh, to make it a little bit different, but uh, people can expect to, to be very close to uh, the glow skating. Which adds to, I know that one of the neat things about winter warmer is it really showcases the venues of St. Andrews. We're so used yeah. to celebrating what's beautiful outside here in the summer months, but this really showcases what's beautiful about a lot of indoor life here in St. Andrews. Was that part of the motivation for, for creating this festival? Well, I think it was really uh, motivated by, you know, just trying to provide things for people to do at a time when, you know, we're always complaining. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> we all can't go away. I, you know, I love winter and, and uh, you know, if it's, I like winter to be winter, and sometimes it's not, and uh, so you kind of get down. And if there's some kind of activity that might help bring you up, you know, and for me, music does that. And I, I just, you know, we, we have such a rich tradition here in town of live music, and it's growing and growing. I mean, um, you know, with Kira now, with uh, Paddle Fest uh, being as large as it is. Um, with the, the concert series that we're, uh, Luke McDonald and I are running in the fall and winter, um, you know, St. Andrew's Arts Council, the opera workshops. I mean, that's, you know, almost 40 years of opera workshops in town here. I mean, it's, it's really quite amazing. So, you know, I think St. Andrew's has sort of developed as a, as a go-to place for, for music in, in a way. And, and uh, you know, it's often just the fair weather 
months that see that. So, uh, you know, there's been a little bit of a, a move towards winter festivals. So we sort of, uh, yeah, began to tag on the coattails of uh, In the Dead of Winter Festival in Halifax. Mm -hmm. It started a couple of years before Winter Warmer. Shivering Songs in Fredericton, which is always a week before Winter Warmer. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's starting now to be recognized and people are coming to town just because there's something happening here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so, and yeah, I mean, by default, you know, we have, we have a, a wonderful resource in, in the town. You know, the town is a wonderful resource. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, it's beautiful in winter as well. I feel like people are, for, for good and for bad, catching on that we're a great <laughs> destination 12 months of the year. Mm -hmm. Do you find, Merv, when you're fielding comments from maybe not the locals, but that you're, we are getting busier in what we used to call the off season? Yeah, absolutely. Me personally, I've been so busy this month, like just working with hockey and the different groups that are here right in the arena. And we've got so many different uh, activities going on this winter, so it's definitely kept me very, very busy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, when people are either locally or, or from afar booking their tickets, can you book a ticket for just one show, or how does it work in terms of uh, getting to the different events? Is there a season, a pass to the whole festival? Yeah. <clears throat> so I think, you know, what the town has done, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think pretty much everything that you've put together is is free. There are a couple of, there's a movie night, I think. Where yeah, most a, of the things will be free. So the only ticketed events are those that uh, are, are music related, really. And, um, and so, yes, there is a website and it has a schedule of both the music and the Winter Carnival on it. So it's www.winterwarmerfestival.ca. Um, so if you go there, you, you, can, you, you can see a schedule of everything that's happening. And if uh, there, there's a ticketed event, there's a link to a, a ticket site, a ticket platform. And uh, you can buy individual tickets for each of the music shows that, uh, that have tickets. Some of the shows are free or by donation. Um, so we have a, a range that way. And there are a limited number of festival passes, which will get you into all the ticketed events, save I think the, that uh, emerging songwriter circle is not in, in that package, but, um, um, but virtually everything else, else is. So. Uh, I know you're a huge part of this, uh, as is Luke McDonald in St. Andrews, becoming this music destination. Right. When we think of Paddle Fest as the unofficial kickoff to summer, summer yeah. and then Winter Warmer as one of those events that keeps us going in, in those mm. colder months. Why do you think St. Andrews, not just in terms of music lovers, but it is a place that musicians want to come to, to perform? It is a special place. We are biased, though, because we live here. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's... Um, you know, it's a it's a great place I, I, uh, to come just to visit. But I, you know, there's a there's a hospitality here, a welcoming uh, feeling here. Um, you know, and I think you know, just over time, there's just been this history of of workshops of um, uh, you know, uh, when I was at when I had Salty Towers, we. Uh, there was just this this camaraderie that built up because there were so many musicians coming through and staying there. It was all, it was just this uh, you know sort of perfect storm sort of element that happened back in the in the late mid to late nineties and um, and uh, you know m there was just an influx at that time. I think the music scene in New Brunswick had really started in, well all over the East Coast. It started to take off and and. Um, and St. Andrews became, you know, that destination for, for musicians and they just began to develop this relationship with the place and kept coming back, you know, whether they were playing here or not, and some moving here, you know. Um, uh, and then the whole idea of uh, recording that started to happen. So, yeah, it's, it's just become a, um, uh, yeah, a place that, that musicians have, have come to, to love and appreciate, I think. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and I think, you know, it, 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 chicken and egg sort of thing in a way, but I, you know, we're very lucky here because people are, are very, um, I don't know what the right word is, might not be tolerant, but they're willing to come out and, and listen, you know, take a chance. I mean, the, the artist doesn't have to be a household name, you know, and there's no way we're gonna get Taylor Swift here. <laughs> 
to perform anyway. So, uh, you know, but uh, I've always been a proponent of the idea that some of the best music you're going to hear is by people that you've never heard of before. So true. And festivals are always, that's the, you might go for one reason for the headliner and then end up weaving with a new favorite band. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we just encourage people to, you know, take a chance, uh, come on out, uh, you know, even if there's no snow, we can do sort of snow go. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we'll still have something. <laughs> yeah. I have a feeling late January, though, we will have snow by then, which is, you know what, for me, one of my favorite things about winter in this part of the world, though, is that it stays so beautiful, mm -hmm. where if you spent if you've spent too many years in a big city like I have, then you're used to it just being by late January. It's gray. Right. And here yeah. it still looks like a postcard. Do you both have favorite things? But I'll start with you, Merv. Uh, winter, and I don't mean Christmas. I mean winter in St. Andrews. Honestly, just the backdrop of the water right there. That's kind of why we chose the blockhouse as the location for sno or the Snoga, uh, just because can you imagine doing yoga right there with the beautiful background of... Uh, you know the bay right there so just st andrews is a beautiful beautiful location and it's got the every picture you take is like a scenic backdrop in the background so mm -hmm. i love it and you jamie yeah i think just um you know st andrews itself is you know postcard town you know the architecture it shines at any season but you know you don't have to go very far if you really you know want to experience those winter activities like snowshoeing or cross-country skiing or hiking in the snow and uh, you know out to Shamcook or Gibson Lake or even just you know beyond the highway you know there there, there are places to uh, to do all of that you know and, and you barely have to be in your car you know so mm -hmm. it's uh, you know, you don't have to worry about, about traveling great distances to do wonderful things. So. One of the misconceptions about St. Andrews is that it shuts down after New Year's, but that's not only not the case, there are actually um, some different hotels that you're teaming up with for this year's right, festival. Right, right. Um, as I said, we've uh, we've done shows over the years at, at the Algonquin, and because of the uptake in uh, popularity of, of winter warmer, um, people coming to stay for the weekend. The, the hotel is now uh, offering a special rate for the event for that weekend. However, you have to book before the end of December. So uh, we encourage you to uh, take a look at the website, see what you'd like to attend and get your tickets and then book a room at the, at the Algonquin. And when we're looking at this year's winter warm warmer lineup, I know you will do your best to get to everything, but what are some of your not missable events on this year's lineup. Um, <laughs> not to put you on the spot. Yeah, right? <laughs> no, no. Um, well, you know, I, I, uh, I'm a, I'm a songwriter fan. I guess. Um, I mean, I go to, and see many, many things, but I. Uh, I've really come to like singer-songwriters. Um, so the, the, the Dave Gunning, J.P. Cormier event, it's the uh, first time that I've had them here together. I've had each of them separately. In fact, J.P. Cormier has been a previous, a, is a Winter Warmer alumni, but um, he was here solo, uh, not with Dave Gunning. They're both very good friends. They've re released a couple of albums together and the two of them together have amassed, you know, a, a couple of dozen or more ECMAs, Junos. I mean, they're they're world class musicians. So I mean, you're not going to go wrong seeing something like that. And Merv, when it comes to recreational activities for uh, the festival, what are you most looking forward to? I'm excited for some of the the what the restaurants are going to put on. There's going to be some great food though for the weekend. Um, and I'm most excited for the challenge, the community challenge that we're doing. So uh, it is, it's going to hopefully, fingers crossed, there will be some snow. But what we're looking at doing is uh, doing some snow sculptures in your, in your front yard or in a community park. And people who want to take part in it can go ahead and build something, uh, some kind of uh, snow sculpture. And uh, when they're done, they'll take a picture and send it to us to and turn to for some prizes. So I'm excited to see what people can uh, build there and how creative people will be so all right well yeah. if Christmas is any indication with the lights I think we're in for a oh, treat yeah, absolutely I've also just remembered too that uh, Cove Nordic Spa in Boca Beck have come on board too to be 
part and parcel of it all too. So uh, winter spa uh, activity. Oh so and it's a mm. pretty special place. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So great they're going to have we're going to have music uh, out there. So, so probably on a, a Saturday afternoon or, or something, there'll be an event out out there. Wow. Small small group. Thank you both for giving me something to look forward to <laughs> in the new year. Thank you both so much for being here today. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. My guests today have been Jamie Steele and Mervyn Henselpacker talking about the Winter Warmer Festival 2024 in January in St. Andrews. I'm Vicki Hogarth. Thank you for watching Southwest Magazine. Southwest Magazine is a news and public affairs production of CHCO Television.